Well, it's a pleasure today to have Dr. Fred Matiangi with us. He's the Cabinet Secretary for Information, Communication and Technology in Kenya. Uh, Dr. Matiangi, hello. Hello. Thank you for uh, coming today. Now, Kenya uh, has a bit of an interesting track record with uh, innovation, and you've come here to talk about innovation and ICTs and development. What does innovation mean in your context? Well, it means many things. Uh, first of all, development of solutions or products to address everyday needs uh, of uh, the ordinary people in our, in our country. Uh, innovation is need-driven, uh, looking at the needs in development, needs in communication, needs in financial transactions, in accessing and moving information, in the use of data uh, to uh, design and de develop uh, a number of uh, development solutions. It, it, it's all uh, uh, part of what we are describing broadly as, as innovation. As, as okay, so it across yeah. all the fields of, yeah. uh, of ICTs. Tell me about some innovations that your country has already come up with, because I know there have been some very important ones, haven't there? Well, yes, indeed. Uh, of course, Kenya is famous for um, the mobile money uh, transfer service, which is an innovation popularly described as M-Pesa movement of money on the mobile uh, platform. But, but uh, since M-Pesa, Kenya has come up with so many other innovations. Um, solutions have been developed on collection of revenue, for example, uh, you know, in various places um, using mobile-based uh, solutions. Uh, transmission of data and information on health, uh, we're calling them health solutions, developed and they ride on the mobile trans uh, platform. Uh, M education. Uh, you know, we're developing frameworks uh, where, or applications where, um, information, including education, learning, and so on, is riding on the mobile uh, platform, as it were. And and several others, M agriculture, for example. In M agriculture, we 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 have very creative innovations that have come up in Kenya. For example, M cow, you know, which is a solution, an application that enables dairy farmers access information. Uh, and, and solutions to some of the challenges in, in, in dairy farming, which also again writes on the mobile platform, uh, you know, as it were. So, so several uh, innovations have uh, come up in Kenya as, as a result of the creative potential uh, in, in, in the country. For these systems and ideas to work, of course, you need access. Um, how, is, how would you grade access to ICTs in Kenya and what would you see as the big barriers that you have to overcome to uh, roll out improved access to your people? Well, we're improving as government, for example, we're, we're putting in a lot of resources to try and improve access to the internet in Kenya. We're increasing penetration every year as, as it were. But of course, for, for these innovations to thrive, uh, to be scaled up, to go to the marketplace, several things need to happen. One, of course, we need a uh, very supportive infrastructure. I broadly described this in the meeting and discussion we had this morning as an ecosystem that is supportive of innovation. And the ecosystem would include developed infrastructure, uh, ensuring that there is access to the internet, affordable internet across the country as it, as it were. And as government, we're working with private sector players to invest heavily in building uh, the infrastructure, taking the fiber optic cable across the country, ensuring connectivity across Kenya, and supporting private investors who are trying to enhance uh, wireless connectivity across the country as, as, as it were. Secondly, there must be an effective linkage between government, private sector players, uh, industry, uh, research sites or resource sites as we may call them, we have tried to create that ecosystem also where uh, you know, all the critical actors come together and review a number of things, including the right policies that could support innovation. Three, there's need for supportive uh, financial uh, frameworks that, that would support innovation. Many of the innovators or those who develop solutions are not necessarily endowed with resources to develop further, to move from incubation to uh, uh, startup to finally marketplace. Uh, there's need for resources. Much as we are trying to work with the private sector to attract some angel funding to do this, we also as a government have, have, have done some work through Enterprise Kenya, which is uh, a resource we have created recently. It's a partnership between government and the private sector. We are putting together some angel uh, funds to be able to do some hand-holding uh, you know, for young innovators to move forward. Fourthly, there's need to develop a very strong intellectual property uh, uh, ecosystem where 
innovators are not robbed of their creativity and their development as, as it were. We have strong intellectual property regime in the country. We're trying to improve on it. And then we have institutions like the Kenya uh, Copyright uh, Board, uh, Kikobo, and the intellectual property um, agency that is working on this to ensure that we develop uh, uh, protective uh, uh, frameworks around innovation as it were. Fifthly, of course, is to ensure that we build the capacity of the innovators to be able to know beyond innovation how do you then move, you know, through incubation to, you know, start up, then you go to marketplace and, and, and so on. And again, jointly, the government is working with the private sector to ensure that this, this, this is addressed and sorted out. The sixth issue is, of course, the market. Uh, you know, to be able to scale up, uh, you're, you're talking about innovations, uh, being able to marketize, to commercialize, so that they go to the marketplace and so on. And, and we're trying to see how we can leverage our relationships with uh, our neighbors so that we create one regional ecosystem that supports uh, innovators. So that if we are working within the framework of the Eastern Africa uh, organization, uh, we, we are calling the East African Cooperation, or under the Northern Corridor Integration uh, Infrastructure Framework, which brings together Kenya, Rwanda, and Uganda, and South Sudan, we, we have a framework of about 150 or so million people. And that population provides a huge market and environment for, for, for innovation to, to thrive, as it were. And there are many, many other uh, issues. Even if government puts together resources, for example, that's not going to be enough. There's need to uh, you know, bring other private sector players. And that's why I hope ITU, for instance, will leverage its, its, its responsibility, will leverage its uh, institutional network to interest and attract uh, angel capitalists who can put in resources to support innovation uh, you know, on the continent to move forward. Private players also need to help with infrastructure. You know, there is no government anywhere. Whether you look at examples that have been very successful, there is no government anywhere that has been able, in and of itself, uh, to put resources to support sufficient uh, spread of the broadband footprint in their countries. It's important to our private sector so players. It's a question here. then of yeah. uh, uh, the classic multi-stakeholder approach. You've got to align all Absolutely. the players yeah. uh, in the one direction. Absolutely, it, it's building. Uh, a multi-stakeholder approach to supporting innovation. And, and of course the government being able through policy, through legislation, through um, uh, collaboration within and without to provide an enabling environment for multi-stakeholder engagement and involvement in, in innovation. Otherwise, so, as I was saying, no government has done this on their own and succeeded. Private sector is critical and the dynamism of the private sector is necessary to do this. Well, Dr. Fred Matsiangi of uh, Kenya, the Cabinet Secretary, indeed, for Information, Communication and Technology, thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure, and thank you for having me. Thank you.